This episode of the Accounting Insiders Podcast is brought to you in part by Zero. Zero is a powerful cloud accounting software that improves efficiencies across your practice. With all client data stored on a single unified ledger, you and your clients can easily access and collaborate on the same set of books. Zero's advisor tools and automation solutions reduce time-consuming manual tasks and put data entry on autopilot. Work faster and more efficiently than ever before with Zero. Visit zero.com slash accounting insiders to learn more. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Today's podcast is a replay of Insightful Accountants Marketing Talks webinar with Janelle Sakura from Kajama Marketing for Accountants, recorded on October the 25th, 2023. Make sure you are following us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and X, formerly Twitter. All right. While we uh, while we wait on people to file into the room, Janelle, welcome. And I always start start my uh, webinars off with a question that has nothing to do with the content. Just while people file in, so it's fall. What food says fall to you? Ooh, for me, probably my favorite go to is chili. Love it. It's that food that you make that tastes even better the second day. You're How about right. you? Yes, that's excellent. So my wife makes a, uh, it's a really good butternut squash soup. Oh, that sounds delicious. Made that this week. Oh man, it was excellent. Yeah, that sounds delicious. We'll be ready for some more of that soon enough. So Absolutely. Well, you can send right. some my way. I'll yeah, send right. it. <laughs> it does. It makes a very big batch. So uh, I don't know that it would ship very well. <laughs> yeah, chili does as well, but that's one of those things where you can kind of, you know, eat on it throughout the week. Right. Yeah, we'll usually do chili around Halloween. Sit down, mm, and yeah, the in the fire pit, and oh yeah, get kids and eat chili. So yes, yeah. Well, we have a big Halloween in this neighborhood, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, ours. Uh, we just like in the past year, probably a dozen kids moved. We live on a double cul-de-sac, so about a dozen kids moved in in the past year. So we'll be busy for sure. Wow. Well, for all of the, the number crunchers on this call, they will love to know that we gave away over 5,000 pieces of candy in just uh, under three hours last year. <laughs> it was insane. So uh, we're looking forward to another fun year. That's a lot of cavities. So, yes, it is. Yep. Right. Well, let me get us kicked off here. So welcome and uh, good afternoon and welcome to the first Insightful Accountant Marketing Talks webinar. What is a brand and where do you start? My name is Gary D. Hart. I'm the publisher of Insightful Accountant and the host of uh, today's short 30-minute webinar. Our speaker is Janelle Sikora. As the founder and chief marketing guru of Thought Leader Creative, which is now Kajabra, a marketing for accountants, Janelle is no stranger to navigating the landscape of professional services, sales, and marketing. With a remarkable 30-year journey in the industry, she has dedicated her expertise to empowering firms in the tax, accounting, and bookkeeping sectors, and her mission is to craft and Im implement groundbreaking marketing strategies that not only resonate, but also drive exponential growth. That's what uh, the marketing should be doing for us, right? Driving exponential growth. So before I turn it over to her, a couple of housekeeping items. This is a 30-minute webinar, give or take, uh, so there is no CPE. If you have any questions, we, you can throw them in the chat. Janelle's going to be uh, monitoring that chat. But if it's a specific question to something that she said, put the, the whole, make it a whole question. Don't just say, what you mean? Say, what did you mean when you said the color red is better than blue? Be real specific in your question so that if she doesn't answer it when you post it, she'll know what you're talking about. There will be a recording of this. will be available and placed on our YouTube channel, typically about two days. And then I will drop a link to the YouTube channel into, um, into the chat once Janelle takes over. And then lastly, I will also drop a copy of the slide deck into the chat as well. So Janelle, thanks for, uh, for presenting today and thanks for kicking off the Insightful Accountant Marketing Talks uh, webinar series. Great, thanks Gary, I really appreciate being here. Thank you for such a warm welcome. And we will get started, I will, um, check the chat every few minutes or so. So as Gary said, if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them in there. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to throw a lot of information at you today. Um, so if it sounds a little bit like Greek, my job is I'm going to try and, and put this in layman's terms and really simplify a lot of things so that you walk away with this with walk away from this with at least one action item, if not a whole bunch of them. 
and you'll get the replay as well as the handout. And if you've got questions or anything, you'll know how to reach me at the end of this as well. So uh, with that said, let's get started. And let's start at the ver with the very basics. What is a brand and where do you start with it? So I want to, because you all are very good with numbers, I want to start with talking numbers. Um, and you know, in a world full of numbers, the key thing is how do you make yours count? And really that's what the crux of a brand is. A brand is how do you differentiate yourself? What do people say about you when you're not in the room? Um, if someone is recommending your firm, what would they say about you? Why somebody else should work with you? That essentially is your brand. And we're going to talk about the importance of a brand and then where you get started. And then we're going to get into some action items for you. So your key takeaway from this slide is the amount of, of stimulus really that our brains see every day, day right? There's a lot of competition out there. There are a lot of CPA firms, as you can see, over 46,000, lots and lots of bookkeeping and payroll businesses, over 316,000. But what's most important to remember is that as consumers, even you and I, most of our decisions are made based on emotion. What happens is we decide something as much as we try and be rational and logical and put pros and cons together and we analyze we make that final decision most times based on emotion and then we justify it with logic later. So it's this is going to be important as we get into this presentation. Um, I also want to call your attention to the fact that the majority of people, three quarters of them, they'll, they will judge a company's credibility based on its website. So your brand is really important there as well. And that same amount of people would recommend a brand they trust, right? And that's important too, because a lot of your business, you, you want to get from word of mouth. And most firms that I've worked with over the years and continue to work with, they have a lot of word of mouth um, business that comes their way. More than anything, I want you to put this into perspective. So today in the digital world, we see between all of our screens, however many screens you've got in front of you, plus your phone, plus billboards and whatever you see on your commute to work, if you've got a commute, we literally see our brains absorb anywhere from six to 10,000 brands a day. That's a lot of noise and a lot of stimulus. So if you think about that many brands that come in front of your eyes, something has to stand out in order for you to wanna to do business with a certain brand, right? So same thing with your prospective clients. Something needs to stand out about you and be very distinct and that's your brand. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay. So you are definitely experts in accounting, uh, but without a brand, you become not any different than any other accounting firm across town, right? And honestly, this has changed with the digital world. Years ago, back in the um, 70s, I can't remember if it's the 70s or the 80s from the statistic, but it used to be where only about 1,500 brands would flash in front of people's eyes a day. Now that's six to 10,000. So the digital world, we know this, it's changed everything. If you work with small business owners, as a small business owner myself, I live in the Tampa Bay area in Florida. I don't, my accountant's not even in my same state. You don't have to work with somebody in your backyard anymore. You're not limited to a local geography. So the competitive landscape has opened up dramatically, which makes it even that much more important to have a brand to differentiate yourself. And as bookkeeping services and tax prep, as those types of services have commoditized more or less, a brand is where you really start to be able to showcase how unique you are and what your high value services are and charge for them. Now, there's a reason I put this picture on this slide too, because you're probably looking at it going, what the heck is that? I'm going to tell you um, a, a perfect example of differentiating a brand. When I was a kid, we used to go on vacation a lot in Lake of the Ozarks. I'm from the Missouri area. My grandparents had a house there. We would go. And my favorite thing to do was to go into what my grandfather would call the junk shops in the strip. And they were all junk shops. They had, you know, just trinkets, you know, keychains and stuff. But as a kid, it was like a candy store to me. And I'm, I'm a shopper. I even like loved the junk back then. And after a while, I would go into shop after shop after shop all the way down the strip. And they all would start to look the same. So clearly there wasn't necessarily a brand there. They were all selling the same keychains, the same little souvenir type of trinkets. And so my point here is to you have to create a brand that isn't going to be just like everything else that others are seeing. 
Um, the other thing, the other point I'll make here is that by and large, the majority of people, they will pay a premium for a product or service that they trust. And trust is a big factor when someone does business with an accountant, right? Um, so let's get into a little bit more about what a brand is and where you start. So a brand essentially um, has three main components. The most foundational component would be your messaging. And this is something that accountants struggle with because you guys are great at numbers. Sometimes it's a lot harder to articulate what's different and especially how to articulate your brand in layman's terms, which is super important. We're going to talk about that. The key part about your message that I see um, a lot of firms miss is the fact that it has to start with your customer. You have to tell your brand story and get your message across through their eyes. You've got to flip the script, if you will. And you have to make sure that your message is consistent across everywhere you're seen publicly. We'll get into the message and how to craft a really good message because that's going to be your takeaway for today. Um, but your message also incorporates your promise, your brand promise. This is really your unique selling proposition, if you will. And it kind of reflects both your core values as well as um, what it is that you offer uniquely in your set of services. And once you've got that foundation, that foundational messaging built, that's when you can layer in the visual part. That's when you can talk or really address your visual identity, whether that's logo, colors, design aspects, those types of things. So in, in, a, in a very Reader's Digest version of what a brand is, it's what people say when you are not in the room. It's what makes you very different and stand out. And the components of a brand would be your message and your promise. And then, of course, you layer in that visual identity to align with the messaging, but it has to start, to start with messaging. All right. So how do you do it? If you're, if you're someone who is really good at bookkeeping, great at numbers, loves taxes or accounting or um, advisory strategy, where do you start? So let's break it down and let's make it really simple. Here's where it starts. It has to start with who your ideal client is. Now, I want you to think for a minute about... If you had someone who was ready to walk in your door right after this presentation and they were going to be the best client to where you're like, man, if I had 10 of these or if I had 20 more clients like this, I want you to think about who that client is. All right. I want you to think about what what industry might they be in? Um, what specific service would you be providing for them? Um, I often say that riches are in the niches. And we're going to get into how you design a message for your ideal client. We're going to talk a little bit more about being specific as well. But the other thing that the, the next place you go, once you've actually identified, here's who my ideal client is. And by the way, next month in the next marketing talk, we're going to get really deep into how to understand your client psychologically and how to um, really understand the journey that they're on and be able to speak to that. Um and also understanding who your ideal client is not. For the purposes of today, once you've been able to identify who your client is and be able to create some messaging that resonates with them, and that's going to be what we talk about next, then you can talk about who you are and your uniqueness, your unique selling proposition. In other words, how do you differentiate your business from another bookkeeping firm across town, from another CPA firm across town or across the state? And why are you the one that's equipped to solve your client's problems? You have to have an offer and it has to be really clear and really compelling. It can't be general. And then the third part um, to the messaging is to kind of package it all up and put a nice bow around it, which is creating a narrative, a brand narrative. It involves an elevator pitch, which we're going to talk about how to create. It involves um, creating your building your story to draw your client in because you're going to start with their problem and you're going to end with a clear call to action. And it also involves designing a customer experience and being able to, that's part of your brand is that experience that you provide customers. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. Before we talk about you and how you craft the you part of your message, I want to dig a little bit deeper into what I call the five stages of awareness for clients. Your messaging always has to start with clients. And let me take a quick pause here because what I want to do is tell you that my best recommendation for you would be after this webinar, or maybe when you've got time to watch the replay, whenever it is, 
Carve out an hour, get out a legal pad, open a Google Doc, open a Word Doc, whatever you need, and sit down and start brainstorming. Scratching things out does not have to be perfect words, but this is something that you do have to write out. Your messaging is critically important, okay? You have prospects that will come into your business from five different stages. And every prospect out there that could be your perfect ideal customer, they will be in one of these five stages. So I want to help you just understand what these stages are and how you have to build your message through that client's eyes. Okay. So picture your ideal client that you just pictured in your head a few minutes ago. Maybe that's a restaurant owner. Maybe it's um, a veterinarian, a dentist. Maybe it's someone, a small business um, that's, you know, a two to three person business that you provide bookkeeping services for, whatever that special ideal client is for you. I want you to think of them while we talk about this slide. And then we're going to flip it over to you. In the, in the lowest end stage, you have prospects out there that are completely unaware of who you are and they don't think anything's broken. They might not have any idea that their books are a mess. Um, they might not have any idea that um, there's way better ways to do your tax return than to just rely on TurboTax every year. Um, but there are those people and they are going to find you and they may find you organically um, through your website as an example, or through social media, they may find you because they had barbecue and somebody was just raving about um, the new service provider that they found. In any case, at this stage, your messaging about your firm has to really just be focused on educating them about the problem they don't even know they have. You're raising awareness and you're doing this in every public facing aspect of your brand, meaning social media, potentially blog posts, talking about problems that you solve, and of course, always on your website. The next stage is when someone goes, oh shoot, yep, something's broken. Yep, got a problem, I know, my books are a mess, or gosh, maybe they had a huge surprise during tax season they weren't expecting. Um, no one likes those. <laughs> and now they know they have a problem, but they don't know who you are, they haven't found you yet, and they don't know how you can help. But again, they run into you somehow, some way that they become a lead in your funnel, if you will, sales speak. And so what you also have to be able to do in your messaging is point out pain points. That's super important. People's brains are always wired as much as we want to talk about, you know, how altruistic we might be or are, we're focused on others. We are always wired to solve a problem in our lives. And so therefore your message has to address a pain point and you have to be able to show them on your website and in other places what the stakes are. If there aren't consequences for not doing business with you, then there really isn't a reason to do business. So the way that you do that is you demonstrate empathy too. And you're agitating those pain points, recognizing pain points. And you do this not only on, on website messaging, but through um, targeted email campaigns, um, if you've got prospect email campaigns going out, social posts, blog posts, those types of things. And then the next stage is solution aware. And these are the folks that are like, oh, wow, okay, I have a problem. I know there's answers, there's solutions out there. I have a lot of choices. What do I do? This is where you also need to have messaging that focuses on the benefits of the service you provide, not just the features, not that just that you do monthly bookkeeping or financial statements, but what does that really mean to that prospect? And some ways to do that would be to focus on those types of messages in your on your website. I'm a huge proponent of video. Um, YouTube is the second largest search engine there is. And I know a lot of accountants are really hesitant to get on video. And I tell them, it is, you don't have to be perfect. No one's looking for a news anchor. They just want a genuine human who is giving valuable knowledge. Um, and then as we move kind of up the spectrum here quickly, product aware, this is when someone's found your firm and now they're like, hmm, I have a problem. This person could solve my problem. I don't know if they're the right choice. This is where it's very important for you in your messaging to have social proof. And what that looks like is Google reviews. I cannot underline that enough have Google reviews, get Google reviews. I can help you with strategies on how to do that. If you're just not sure or feel weird asking about asking for reviews, I get that. Um, Google reviews are huge. Don't be afraid to ask for testimonials. If you have clients that have had a great experience, ask them for a testimonial and ask their permission to be able to share that testimonial either on your website or in social media. 
because here's why. Think about the last time you bought something from Amazon. And I guarantee you, when you've bought something from Amazon or any place, you've looked at the reviews. You don't select a service provider without looking at the experience somebody else has had with them first, whether it's a dentist, whether it's someone who's going to install a privacy fence or a pool, it doesn't matter. Um, an accounting firm, social proof is critical. And then finally, kind of that hot zone where we want every client to be is where they found you, they've discovered you've got a solution to their problem, they've vetted you out, they're ready to take action, but they haven't yet. I want to remind you that on that first or second slide I had where it shows all the brands that pop into people's faces, we've gotten numb to that noise. So what does that mean? That means we don't make decisions unless we're told to make a decision. And as accountants, it's really hard for you to ask for the business or to ask for someone to take that next step. But if you don't, they won't. So having that compelling call to action in your messaging is important. Having it on your website, like sign up or book a consultation or let's chat. Or perhaps if you're doing a sales presentation and you're walking through what you can do for someone at the end of that, you present them with a proposal. Don't send it to them and get back to them. Just say, okay, if everything sounds good to you, the next step in our process, here's, here's, here's how it looks to do business with us. The next step in our process is we sign the proposal, we get that out of the way, and then we schedule our initial consultation, whatever that process looks like for you. But you've got to call them to action. Okay. All right. We've spent a lot of time talking about your customer. More importantly, let's talk about you. How do you use this messaging to stand out from your competition? I'm going to encourage you to do three things. One, I alluded to this earlier, consider specializing, focus on an industry or a service specialty. Now I spoke with a firm a couple of days ago and I asked, tell me a little bit about your clients. Who do you enjoy working with the most? And the answer I got was, well, I've been in business for over 30 years and I pretty much work with everyone. I got some contractors, got some restaurants, you know, got a lot of 1040s. Um, and I said, okay, what do you enjoy doing most for them? And the answer was, well, we'll do anything they need us to do. I would tell you that that is something where you've got an opportunity really to specialize. You don't want to be too general. You've heard the frame, Jack, or the phrase, Jack of all, all trades, master of none. It could not be more true when you have as much competition as you do. So you you definitely need to specialize. And it doesn't have to be an industry. If you specialize in home services or construction, great, that's fantastic. But it could also be something like specializing in, I want to work with really small businesses under five employees who are just getting started. And I want to do the bookkeeping for them. Or I want to work with um, you know home-based businesses. Or maybe I want to focus on... Um, advisory services for businesses who are beyond the startup phase. They're somewhere between, you know, scaling and exit. Whatever that specialty is, you have to define that. That's incredibly important. And then again, that we're talking about you now, not through your customer's eyes. You're going to want to translate that through your customer's eyes. Then I also would urge you just to consider the idea of maybe renaming some of your services. Remember that when we live in a world that we're so in the weeds all day long, Tax prep and tax tech uh, talk and bookkeeping talk and accounting talk, they're second nature to you. But you get a 25-year-old influencer out of college who's making a lot of money and needs an accountant, they don't have a clue what cash flow management really means. And I can I can tell you that for a fact because I know one of them. So think about names for services that might resonate a little bit more and to find the benefit of the service. So something like I just made this up. Cash flow management could be liquidity and profit management. Everyone knows what profit is. Instead of saying monthly financial statements, maybe you say something like financial success summaries or financial insights. And then finally, I also urge you to potentially package your services. So if you do monthly bookkeeping, think about something else you could package into that to be very unique to you and your brand because nobody else could duplicate it. Okay, moving on. Your unique selling proposition. I know sales is a really bad word. No one likes to think of themselves as a salesperson. I get it. But what you have to think about from a messaging standpoint is what is your unique selling proposition? So this is just a checklist for you to make sure that what you come up with checks all these boxes. I want to just give you a few examples and then I'm going to move on because I want to leave plenty of time for some questions. Um, I'm going to check up here really quick and make sure there's nothing in here. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, I want to make sure I wasn't missing anything yet. Whoops. Let me go back here. All right. 
Okay, so your unique selling proposition, oops, I can't get that off my screen. All right, your unique selling proposition should check all these boxes, as I mentioned, but I want to give you an example, especially like clear and concise. Make sure that you're not using really elusive words and definitely no jargon, right? Talk as if you're talking in layman's terms, but when I say elusive words, one of the biggest mistakes I see, you could randomly look up just about any accounting firm's website and you're going to see a lot of words like um, uh, distinguished professionals or um, you know professionals with the highest level of integrity and the best service. And we provide a tailored customer service experience or we've been in business for 38 years and are committed to the best possible customer experience. Problem with those elusive words are everybody can say them and you don't look different. It's just noise and people skim right past it. What's really important is to be specific. Here's an example of that. Like when I say, you know, we're committed to going above and beyond, that's not specific. You know that. I want to give you an example of what is. So I worked with a client, still do, that um, really went through an entire transformation from sort of a traditional tax factory type firm to completely evolving into an advisory firm several years ago. They decided their sweet spot was entrepreneurs. So to be specific, they say empowering entrepreneurs to tap into their greatness. That's specific. All right. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the details on this slide because you all can read. Um, and this is more or less a checklist of your unique selling proposition needs to make sure and hit all these items. One thing that I cannot underscore enough is e evoking emotion. Remember, 95% of our decisions are made based on emotion. So be sure and tap into that emotion that your, your prospective clients have. All right, um, a few more things. So let's talk just a little bit about, uh, let's see here, let me get out of this, um, your brand narrative. So now that we've brainstormed this out, we've got our legal pad or our Google doc or whatever it is, open word doc, and we've brainstormed out, you know, here are my customers' pain points. Here's, here's the important things for prospective clients to see. Here's my unique selling proposition. I'm gonna tell you to do three things. You need an elevator pitch. And this isn't what you think it is. This isn't stand up for 10 minutes and sell me or pitch me at all. This is a quick tattooed on your brain, roll off your tongue, two to three sentences that you automatically can say when you're at a barbecue or you're somewhere socially and someone goes, oh, hey, so what do you do for a living? You don't want to say, you know, I'm a CPA or I'm a bookkeeper. You need to speak in, in different terms by when they say, what do you do? You wanna speak in terms of problem, solution, result. So the problem might be a question. So it could be something like, well, you know, you know how a lot of super small business owners just absolutely struggle with keeping their books straight and that leads to just a nightmare around tax time and stress at the end of the year. And people are like, oh yeah, definitely. Then you can go into, well, here's what I do. Um, and then you can talk about what your specific solution is and the result people get in working with you. That elevator pitch shouldn't be more than two sentences. And then another um, way that I encourage you to package your messaging is to create an experience. As I said earlier, your brand experience, part of that is your client experience. When you're doing this, it is a narrative. And I'm going to tell you, it probably should be around three paragraphs or so, but you're going to want to tell the story through your client's eyes. You want to talk about how you do business. You're going to also want to be able to lay out any expectations for this is the kind of firm we are. We do things a little bit differently and here's why. Here's what it looks like to do business with us. And then at the very end, you wanna call them to action. That's so important. Where do you use this messaging and this narrative? Um, your website is an obvious one for sure. I like to have people use that entire narrative even in their about section. You can take parts and pieces of all of your messaging and use them consistently across all your social media. You can use them in blog posts. If you create a written document about the experience working with your firm, I highly encourage you to pin that as a blog post. And then you can also set use this type of messaging in various email automations, whether they're emails to um, prospects that you've presented to before that decided not to move forward with you, or whether you're just trying to kind of weed out tire kickers because you're not doing 1040s anymore, you're moving on to advisory and, you, and you're not wanting to feel those calls. There's all sorts of ways that you can use the messaging and email as well. Um, all right, a couple final things. I wanna be able to answer any questions that you guys have. Let's talk about some action steps. 
So from today, what I want you to do is the first thing I want you to sit down and literally write down who your ideal client is. Next month, we're going to get into a lot of the weeds about um, how to identify your ideal client and the things that you need to know about them and that you've got to be able to structure your messaging around. Um, that's most important. Be very specific around who that client is. What industry are they in? What services do they need? What problems do they have? Then you need to differentiate. That's Then you shift to you and you talk about, okay, how am I different? How am I going to present how am I going to build my message to check all those boxes of the unique selling proposition? And how am I going to package this messaging up to resonate with my ideal client? And then I'm going to ask you to, the third step from this call today is to create your brand story. And that's, I want you to flip the script, tell it through your customer's eyes, start with a problem, identifying the problem, empathizing with the problem, talking about why you are the expert in handling that for them, talk about how you do business, and then call them to action at the end. Those are your homework assignments. From there, when you've got that foundation laid, you've done the heavy lifting. That's the hardest part. From there, you can get into the more creative designing the visual elements, your website, your logo, any, any other visual PDFs or any sales presentations that you need to have. And then finally, uh, the, the next step is to make sure that you've got a strong online presence back to the fact that we live in a digital world and you don't have to do business with someone who's in your backyard anymore. You wanna be able to be found online and that's through social media platforms of your choice. Don't get overwhelmed by that. We're gonna talk about that in the next in another session. Um, but we, I, I highly, highly strongly recommend a website um, and your Google business profile. Those are table stakes. If you do nothing else, you have to do both of those and your brand messaging will come into play with both of those. I want to give you some examples you can look at of three um, businesses, three websites that have really good messaging that their, their owners have done a, a phenomenal job working through this. I've worked with all three of these. Um, Gentle Frog is a bookkeeping firm and um, the messaging is just really specific and very good on this website. Harper and Company is a CPA firm in Ohio. And another one, they've, they've got a very specific message that talks to their clients um, and tells the story through their eyes. And then Boulder Valley CPA is another one that I would recommend for inspiration looking at. Um, they're another one that's done a really good job of vetting through who's my client and what is my unique selling proposition and how do I build all of that into a message? So with that, okay, with that, um, this is a lot, as I said at the beginning of this call, this is a lot of information to take in. And I get it if you're like, oh my God, I'm an accountant. I love numbers. I don't do words. Completely understand that. If you need help, I will ask you just to go find me on my website. Just go to kajabber.com, book a 30 minute session. It doesn't cost you anything. And I'm happy to strategize. I'm happy to give you um, my opinions or thoughts or guidance or whatever you would like to help you on this journey of building your messaging. And another thing that I do is um, I also do messaging from soup to nuts with four firms who are looking to build a message from the ground up or to revitalize their message or completely redo their message. Um, so brand messaging is a passion of mine and it's something that um, I'm happy to help with, whether it's doing it for you or just giving you some great pointers and strategy and um, guidance and coaching on, on how to get it done on your own. So with that, um, I think we are like just three minutes over, but I wanted to ask if anyone has any questions, please feel free to let me know. I don't, I don't see any in the chat here, Gary, do you? None yet. I'm going to go ahead and throw in this poll because we did, uh, I think one thing we talked about before, uh, before we went live was just, if you need to talk to Janelle, like, oh, ASAP, the wheels are falling off here. Uh, just say yes. She's not going to spam you. Um, she, she'll certainly reach out and just say, hey, here's my info. Um, otherwise, uh, you can reach her, as she just said, on her website. Uh, one thing, Janelle, that we had talked about before that um, you mentioned there at the very end, and that was the Google business profile. Yeah. And um, would you mind just spending yeah. a minute on that and why that's yeah. so important? Absolutely. Um, yes, we're going to be digging into that a lot deeper in one of our upcoming sessions, but it, it is worth talking about probably every session. This is one of the biggest things I see accounting firms miss and not pay attention to. 
four times the traffic will land on your business profile or your Google business profile versus your website. And that Google business profile will drive traffic to your website. It is also a huge indicator signal beacon, if you will, to Google saying this is an active business. And Google's job is to put active businesses in front of their searchers who are their clients. So if they see a business out there that has a website that just hasn't been updated in years, it's never going to be found. It's, it's who knows how many pages deep it is. If they see a business that has a Google profile that's optimized, all the questions are answered, there's photos, there's content, there's information out there on the Google business profile, that is going to give Google a huge signal that you're an active business. That's also where people land to see Google reviews. So don't underestimate the importance of it. Your action item would be, if you've never given any attention to it, make sure that you've claimed your Google business profile and that you go through the verification process. If you're like, wait, what's she talking about? I have no clue how to do that. Go to my website, book some time with me. I'll literally walk you through it. It's that important. You have to have to have your Google business profile going. So that would be the uh, the momentum building activity is to go do your Google profile. Or if you think you've already done it, go look at it again because it may have changed or um, you know, your business may have changed or you may have left some things out that should certainly be on there. So You should actually be posting to it frequently. You should be putting new content out there on that profile at minimum, at least once, once a month. Oh, all right. Yeah. Is that is that true? Like we're, we're uh, media, right? You, mm -hmm. You think that holds true for us as well, or is it more service-based and local businesses that? You should have something hitting your Google business profile at least once a month, no matter what kind of a business you are. Um, be basically because it shows Google that you're active, right? They want to see that there's informa new information coming out on your website, that things are being refreshed, fresh information. Otherwise, if they don't see that on your website and they don't see that in your Google business profile, then it looks like you're stale. So when I say something new each month, that might just be someone leaving a review, but that's important. And also when people leave reviews, you have to respond, whether it's positive or whether it's negative, you should definitely respond. Thank them for a positive and address the negative ones. Gotcha. All right. And you'll be talking about that more in the future. Oh yeah. Right? Yep. That's the list, right? So yep. you got it. Well, thank you so much. And everybody, this is a, uh, a recurring monthly series. So uh, tell all your friends. And this will be available on uh, our YouTube channel. I dropped the link to um, to the YouTube channel in the chat. I also dropped a copy of the presentation into the chat. And then... Hey, Gary. Yeah. Cassandra has a question. Yeah, so I was uh, just looking at too. So go ahead. Yeah. Let me answer that really quick because it's an excellent question. She asked, what would you post to a Google My Business Profile monthly? Just adding new photos? I love that question. Great question. So yes to new photos. Definitely add photos. Um, but you can also other things you can do videos under 30 seconds, as long as it's under 30 seconds, they, Google loves videos and people love videos, um, blog posts, any other posts, think of it as sort of like social media too. So maybe just posting something, an update or something. Um, so not just photos, think a little bit outside the box there. If you are already scheduling posts to other social media, like LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, and you use a scheduling tool like Loomly or Buffer or whatever, you can hook your Google business profile to that and post to that as well. Great. Well, there we go. All right. Well, we will leave uh, leave it at that unless somebody has a last minute question. Going once, going twice. I guess that's a wrap. Janelle, thank you so much. We certainly appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you again in about one month. And, Got it. Um, look forward to seeing anybody and everybody who will be at uh, QB Connect in a couple of weeks, couple, what, three weeks maybe? So, all right, see you all there. Talk to you Thank soon. You. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. This episode of the Accounting Insiders Podcast is brought to you by Out of the Box Technology. Out of the Box Technology is your partner in accounting data services. With over 7,500 industry migrations performed and an expansive network of third-party integrations, a partnership with Out of the Box will augment your advisory practice and turbocharge client accounting operations. Visit outofthebox.technology.com slash insightful dash accountant to get started.